Welcome back, MTG Joe here. Uh, season has rolled over, uh, so we are in February's ranked season, so we're going to be playing some ranked matches today. Um, for those of you who are kind of keeping track, uh, we were in contention for top 1200. Uh, funny story I'll tell during the stream, but I think we got there. With uh, two minutes left, we are at 10.39, so just waiting for the official record. So pleased if we do get in. Uh, it'll be cool to uh, stream some uh, higher tournament play on the channel. Um, so what we have today is I what I'm calling a mono white divine devotion deck, a mono white prison control deck um, that's kind of leveraging a bunch of enchantments and heliode uh, and kind of a cool interaction. So you have divine visitation uh, with castle Arden Vale. Uh, so a couple of token creators. So you got Donna Hope, which with Divine Visitation will also create angels. Uh, and then you have Ugin, which its tokens will become angels instead. Uh, Heliod, you can, or with Johnny you can make it. With Elspeth you can make it. So a bunch of token creators uh, with Divine Visitation. Arkin of Sun's Grace uh, rewards you for playing a lot of enchantments. Uh, and they create Pegasus that all have uh, flying and lifelink thanks to the Arkin. Um, and then really the deck, you got Heliod, which is um, with a bunch of our Exile enchantments. So you're playing seven Exile effects in Banishing Light, Prison Realm. Sky Tether is kind of a pseudo Prison Realm style effect. I wanted to try out one of these just to kind of get creatures out of the way. Uh, Donna Hope with a bunch of uh, life gain in the deck can draw us cards. Uh, we can also create tokens with it. Birth of Melides ram pseudo ramps us by finding uh, or pseudo card advantage. Uh, you get the life gain as well, which can trigger off Donna Hope. Um, and then Heliode can be animated with all these things sticking around. So your removal is basically permanent removal that stays on the board. Uh, four Shatters uh, that work fairly well in terms of wiping the board. Uh, and then you also have... So the cool thing is if Heliode's active and Shatter, you get to draw a card off it and it doesn't die. Uh, Elspeth Conquers Death. Just more removal, kind of gets back your Arkins or your Johnny Elspeth or Ugin. Um, and then there's Realm Cloak Giant, which is our fifth board wipe, and also a creature on that end as well. Uh, mana base wise, four castles, uh, Labyrinth of Scophos. I wanted to try this out. It's basically a very expensive Maze of Ith. Uh, you remove target attacking creature from combat, so kind of a just get creatures out of the way late game. And a couple mobilized district, if we lock down the board, uh, we can just attack in with it. Uh, it does get the cost reduction from our legendary permanents, so we have a few of them, so it's another way to attack it. Uh, sideboard wise, Devote Decrees, Red and Black, Hushbringer versus the ETB effects, uh, Tithe Taker versus uh, Counterspell decks, Spyglass when we need to shut off certain abilities, uh, Gideon's versus the control matchups or less creatures. I don't want to do Gideon main because we don't have a lot of creatures to protect. Uh, Gideon also has a cute interaction with Shatter where you get to draw a card. And then a couple Heliodes intervention for heavy enchantment based decks to kind of get those out of the way or even just to gain extra life. So think, since we are Mythic, we fell down to Plat 4. I was playing a couple of best of one games. I was actually able to win one this morning with this deck. So <clears throat> we will run it through. We'll do... Uh, a couple, one or two best of three, depending on how long the matches go, and then we'll do a couple best of ones as usual. My Christmas mug tends to be the biggest mug, so got coffee ready. So if you're catching this on YouTube, thanks for stopping by the channel. If you haven't done so already, if you can hit a like or subscribe, both are free and easy ways to support the channel if you enjoy the content. Uh, if you want to know when we go live on Twitch, easiest ways to drop a follow on Twitch. Other than that, um, let's get started. Okay, so finding a land there is not too bad. Don't mind curving Dawn into this, into Arkin. Uh, this looks like a blue-white control deck, potentially Esper. Okay, so this is Doom Foretold, which actually is very bad matchup for us. It turns out when all your removals enchantments that stick around, you don't do too well. And it's an easy way for them to deal with our permanence. Don't 
So I'm going to opt to go with Prison Realm here. Hey, Quantum. How's it going? Uh, Prison Realm is more narrow in terms of what it can hit. Um, I do want the fourth line. Thank you. So my funny story with the Mythic Ladder. So we played Monday, or when was it? Uh, Thursday on stream. Uh, we played to see where we were going to kind of finish. Um, from there, we won the game. We went to like 800 and change, give or take. That's actually interesting, because now they can bounce. So I get to draw two cards here. Um, so then, like, the next morning I check on the Mythic Ladder. We had dropped down to... Okay, so they have Legion's End, so they are an Esper deck. So they're missing that. Um, I think we just mana efficiency-wise, because if we draw a land, we can double spell next turn. Okay, they got Doom. It's not good. Gotta get rid of the Doom foretold. Um, yeah, so... I was working from home the next day because I wanted to play at lunch if we fell behind. So here... I think we just want to force them to sack to, or maybe make them go another turn. Sorry. Elspeth conquers death's not bad. They get to ferry back, but we can just exile it. Um, so yeah, I was planning on working from home, so I checked in the morning, we are at like 10 50 ish got called into work for an emergency had to go down uh so like 40 minute commute into work got into work brought my laptop just in case i'm like oh i'll lunch i'll play get into work the wi-fi network's down so we have no way to connect to my personal laptop can't play finally comes up we're at 11 57 played a game managed to win and then held it out it was just like a weird occurrence of events that I'm like, I'm going to miss out because of all these like strange instances. Okay, so they're going to get two here. Both these Doom Foretolds pop off at the same time. They do get the Shatter out of my hand, which does deal with... They have a Divine Visitation. Ooh, we got a discard. Yeah, so I'm just waiting for like official confirmation that we got it, but it should be good. I'm just gonna get this Teferi off the board. We can get our Pegasus back too. Which gives us some utility. We still have a couple turns. This matchup's gonna be rough. Doom foretold's very good against our deck. So I don't play Golden Egg in mine, and I don't play Legion's End. I prefer Birth of Milites. So next turn I might Shatter. Okay, they're probably going to take the Shatter. Take the Dawn of Hope. Uh, they got another Doom. So the thing here is they got to... They're going to have to sack the Doom unless they have uh, the Thassa. Okay, so they lose it anyways. They basically won for one there. Oh, this might be Dance of the Mance. Yeah.
This creates their tokens. We lose both of these. So we lost this one. Not the match I wanted to queue into. This deck does really well against like traditional blue eye control. Um, I think we just bring in the interventions and the tithe takers. So the tithe takers are a way that even when we sack them, they'll come back. Sky tether's not going to do anything in this matchup. Realm Cloak's fine, I think, because it's two bodies. Elspeth's fine to be sacked. Uh, probably shave down a Heliod. They just, they have quite a few ways to be able to deal with it. Same with a Donna Hope. I like Ugin. I could probably shave a Shatter this guy. Maybe two Shatters. And then just bring in maybe we want a Gideon because really to play to the board I don't think we could commit too much to it so I'd rather like the creatures we're gonna have to try to win like the token strategy the fact they have discard and disruption Teferi is very good against their deck as well I'm gonna mulligan this doesn't really do much we'll keep this That seems like the worst. In case they brought in any counter magic, this is also at least a little bit of a tax. Okay, they keep it on top. Helio's intervention is good. So let's just attack in here. I'm going to hold off playing this. It gives them less information of what's in our hand if we just play out the planes this turn. So they can Teferi this turn, bounce my Tithe Taker. actually good because it gives us two plays this turn and it also gets us to Elspeth Conquer's death. So they could have a board wipe this turn. Unfortunately we cast these before the divine visitation otherwise our walls become angels. Might be a thought erasure. It's not. You know what? They might have tried to main phase it and then forgot about Tithe Taker. So let's just get the vine going. So now if they board wipe, we have this. There goes Conquer's death. Really wish one of these lines were castle. So even if they doom foretold. We have the Heliodes intervention that we can instance, excuse me, instant speed. So we can do this for four. And that pretty much takes their whole turn. Ooh, we got the Arkin. Um, probably no point. If we're going to win this, we need to be aggressive. They can have a board wipe, but we're still left with a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, 
Even if we draw like a banishing light or anything, they don't really have targets. Okay, so they bring those back. This leaves us with a 4-4. Four, four. Actually, getting down Donahoe here is good. It gives us a Pegasus, or gives us an Angel. But it also gives us card draw now. And we have Conquer's Death, so we can blow up this Doom Foretold. Okay, the Kaya's Wrath. A little annoying. So I'm probably going to pop off the Donna Hope, keep Divine Visitation. No! Ah! Hate when it does that. So I can wait on this. I can hit them for a Doom Foretold. Not like maximum value, but I still think it's worth to just keep our thing alive. Really annoyed there. Meant to select it, not to create a token, but we did bait out two Othakayas. Um, I think we keep Conquer's Death in hand for something more meaningful. So we are exposed to discard spell here. Opponent's just cycling eggs. Okay, so this is what I was a little worried about. We get thought erasured here. Johnny is very good for us. So we don't get pride mates, but we get a Johnny tokens. Get the Doom here. Kind of running out of cards here. They need to deal with our board. Like these can go eventually. Just get rid of birth, don't care about the two life. Ooh, they have vigilance as well. Mm. We have lethal on the board. So maybe we just gain the life. Because I want to be able to create a token. But even if they board wipe, I still get the token from Tithe Taker with Divine Visitation. Okay, so they're just going to gain life. Could be another Dance of the Mance. This version seems more all in. Okay, so they have Kai's Wrath. Um, just get rid of a Johnny here. You don't do anything. I 
I think I'm actually inclined to play this for no value. Just so I have something to sack and also to set up my draw. cards in library 38 so might be able to grind them a bit this game is much different if we have one of our four castles all these turns of flooding okay so they just dance for 10 here So our oats like shatter the sky. His matchup's really rough. Nope. Gids doesn't do it. We dead. All right, let's not play the Doom Foretold matchup again. That would be probably great. Let me just give Arena a quick reset. I was uh, playing a lot earlier, so clients getting a little leggy on my end. Welcome all those who are tuning in. We are playing a mono white devotion, a different take, not like the life gain aggro version, kind of controly version. Um, so we are playing a deck looking to leverage a bunch of exile enchantments like Banishing Light, Prison Realm, Elspeth Conquers Death, uh, make a lot of tokens with Arkans Grace, Divine Visitation, can make angels with our Donna Hopes, uh, our Pegasus, our Ugins, um, Castle Arden Vale, the Johnnies like you saw in that last game. Uh, kind of pseudo card advantage in Birth of Melides and Donahope, and then Heliodes, uh, a big boy that can kind of close out the game. Um, so that game as well, it was just a weird matchup. Uh, we went, yeah, we could play another best of three. Just seeing uh, time wise what makes the most sense. I want to try to get a, in a best of one. This deck is pretty good against like mono white, or sorry, mono red, because you gain uh, a lot of life. Like just from random things. You also play five board wipes main. Uh, this hand's fine. Birth just gets us like further into the game. And then this deck, because if you get out um, Divine Visitation, even if you drop Birth of Melides late game, um, there's so many planes in your deck, you don't have to worry, worry about missing them. And then the token's also relevant. Okay, so mono red. So what I can do next turn is depending on what they play out, so it's Cavalcade. So I can go another birth here. And then just sky tether this so it can't attack. If they play a Chandra, then I have banishing light for it. I have a a blocker at least and then we're setting up so basically the combo if you will is divine visitation with castle arden veil five man every turn gives you a four four um so the question is do we elspeth this turn no, I think I want to Elspeth with a uh, thing as backup. Like, play Divine Visitation out and then Elspeth. Our life total is pretty high, all things considered. Because then I could just make 4-4s four that are going to be a lot harder to block. Unless they just get all these unblockable dudes.
So we'll just block like this. Okay. I think we just banishing light the cavalcade this turn. That's what's dealing us damage. I probably should have just done that last time. I was prison realming mentality. Because now they're really just doing little chip damage to us. Like, and these walls against this matchup have actually been pretty solid. So something like a Heliode, if we draw it now, is just a 5-5 indestructible with our Devotion going. So next turn, Elspeth creates two Angels. Okay, so they got Bone Crusher. They still have the ability to go unblockable. Interesting. Why they need to attack there. Our life total is still pretty high, so we can do this. This will probably also distract them into attacking Elspeth. We don't have enough to escape her yet. But these having Vigilance is also nice. And then you're not a lifelink token. So this one's a better token to create. Oh, actually it doesn't matter because they all just come as angels. Calamity sucks. So Calamity needs to get Banishing Light this turn. Interesting. So they're just disregarding us. Let's get rid of you. I'm just gonna gain five life. We're ahead on board. I just need to secure enough. Uh... I'm gonna decline the card draw here because I wanna make another token because then we have lethal on board. So you can see better in this matchup than like the Doom Foretold matchup. Thanks, Quantum. Quantum's being very passive considering they're dead. We also have Heliode with these angels that just gain us four life every turn. All right, so in this matchup, Hushbringers are just a life linker that can trade early with Devout Decrees. And I think I want the Tithe Takers. There is a potential. So Conquer's Death is too slow. Ugin's too slow. Sky Tether actually was fine there. Can probably shave down a Donna Hope here. Uh, Johnny's very good. Realm Cloak's another board wipe, so I actually don't mind that. Prison Realm's just more ways to keep the creatures off the board. Maybe we don't play Tithe Taker. Maybe shave down a Heliode. So their ETB stuff won't be as good. Uh, Arkin, if we can untap with this, is very good. Hmm. Okay, just get rid of those. Maybe just shave down the Donna Hopes. 
Divine Visitation was very good there, but it is a little slow. An opponent's draw was a little awkward. So maybe on the play, we don't play uh, Divine. Like we just go down to one. Just play more removal. Hey Dirty, thanks for the follow. I imagine they're probably gonna bring in like Experimental Frenzy. I uh, can't keep that hand. This hand is much better. Um, because we're going to get a land with the birth, I'm actually going to put a land back. I think... Well, we'll have two whites anyways, so we're fine. Just put the labyrinth back. It's a nice thing with birth. It helps smooth out your uh, your draws. Okay, so we're gonna have to go Melides Banishing Light, your Cavalcade here. Melides is great in these against these aggressive matchups. Jeez, Spitfire. A board wipe would be very good for us here. So I'm actually going to Prison Realm the Spitfire because it deals a lot more damage to us in the immediate. That's great. So Sky Tether lets us Sky Tether the Splitter and Vanishing Light on one of these Cavalcades. Double Sky Tether. So one Devotion. This will be two Devotion. Oh, sorry, not Double Sky Tether. It was the one we left on top. Um, Fervent deals one damage, but I think just mana-wise, it's better to get rid of that. So then we're at one, two, three, four. Four, so not enough for Heliod yet. We need another spell. They have Tybalt. Bit of an issue. Ooh, Realm Cloak. Let's just wipe the board here. They do get a Tybalt back, but it buys us another turn. And then we can get Realm Cloak out if we draw another land. The Life Gain Clause is somewhat relevant. So we're taking some damage this turn. Bone Crusher? Yeah. Probably just need to draw into another board wipe, to be honest. Play draw seems relevant here. Because that takes us down to two life. And then we're also taking a point of damage from uh, this dying. shock all right so play draws a little rough there um they do have tybalt i think just to trade early the tithe takers are relevant just run it back like that I think against normal mono red, we're a lot better suited because Cavalcade can just deal incidental damage just through attacking. Like that game, we are dead even with bone, uh, the giant being played. Uh, we'll keep this hand.
Immobilize district late game can trade. Um, I think we just get birth going. Go tithe taker next turn. Okay, they got calamity. We need an exile effect. Sweet. So obviously I'd prefer to do this afterwards, like when I have Arkin out, I'm going to keep that on top. So I could go Arkin next turn and then play out the Banishing Light. And Grim Initiate. The life link here should be relevant, even if they have, uh, what's the dude's name? Tybalt. That shuts off our life gain. We have the banishing light for it. Okay, they have Spitfire. So we get rid of Spitfire here. Gain three life, and I think we're we're in a pretty good spot. Next turn, I have Heliode, which is active, and Mobilize District that can attack in. They can't really like they can attack in to deal some damage, but I gain the life back anyways. Took them down. Forget your mono red. All right. We'll run uh, a best of one. It's funny, every time I build a control deck, I get attack with 30 creatures. Every time I get uh, play an aggro deck, I get the other one. Like, I uh, kill a bunch of things. I was also kind of... I've been working on a Demir Devotion, so base Black Devotion, but with like Ashiok, Oracle, and Thassa to blink your Grey Merchants. So I've been tuning this, and then I tuned in yesterday, and Jeff Hulin played pretty much... The same idea. So he beat me to the punch. I haven't refined it enough yet, so I want to get the numbers right before I play it on stream. It's a little clunky right now. Uh, may want to go like. Feel like you need some sort of card advance or like ramp to that deck. Um, we go first, so we'll keep this. Not thrilled about this hand. Heliodes are not good in multiples, so it's basically a Malta six. Against fires, we're probably not too bad. This is blue red tempo. Also, probably not the worst. The nice thing too is Arkin and its tokens trigger the Heliodes ability. Like I'd have to imagine this is a counter spell. Do we just run Elspeth out? Like I want to get the counters out of their hand so I can resolve something. Okay, they go full price mystical dispute. Elspeth's the, the best one to get countered because it can either come back with Elspeth Conquer's death. Oh, you know what this is? It's probably Reclamation. Um, let's go. There's been a lot more teamer wreck. So we got the counters out of them. They missed a land drop.
Don't they want to counter Bertha Melides? So I would have obviously liked the land, so I could have, like, my order's messed up here. But I'm going to keep jamming. They're going to run out of counter spells eventually. This deck's a lot worse when they don't have Reclamation out. Okay, so they have the Reclamation. I have Conquer's Death for it. They do have a better board wipe now. The uh, Storm's Wrath that deals four damage. Okay, they just go explosion. That's actually good for us because now we're they're down in terms of their shields. And we can just get one of them back. I think we get Elspeth back the following turn. This also taxes them, so their effects get a little worse. Oh, punished, punished. Uh, we got a 1-5 wall now. How many things in my graveyard? Not enough. I can do some damage with Niv. Not making a token till the end step, so it has the best chance of surviving. Still think it was right to take out the reclamation, obviously. Yeah, let's not make a token, let's just do this. I think fogging five damage is more important in this matchup. Sky Tether. Not the best. Not the worst. So put a counter on it. This also activates Heliod. And this triggers, so at least we get another token, worst case. Okay, they sabotage. I may next turn, if we just draw more lands, cast this, oh I can, what are you, XL4. So I can XL4, or I can wait till next turn and do it. Um, Arkin comes down, this makes some 1-1s one that don't do too much. So I think I do it next turn. Because the thing is, right now they would just shoot down those tokens, and then I want to keep a uh, Pegasus, uh, like an Arkin, in the graveyard in case we draw another uh, Conqueror's Death. We're also just like very close to being combo killed. They have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They deal us eight. Uh, if I enable Heliod's lifelink, it doesn't do anything right now. Uh, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. No, I don't want to give him lifelink. Um, I'm trying to keep it active. So what I was doing is with the Sky Tether, if it came down, Heliod would have been active and I could have attacked in. Um, but they decided to sabotage it.
Oh yeah, no, true, good point. It would have been active. They also have Brazen Borrower that could come down, so they just shock here, draw a card. These walls really aren't doing much in this matchup. And I would assume they still have quite a few counters, like Sabotage. They've used two Disputes. I imagine they probably played two to three Disputes, probably a full set of Sabotage. Combo kill. Yeah, I think we're dead. Yeah, they deal seven, draw seven. Well, at least I lost the Niv-Mizzet. That one's tough. Because I think... I think we need to mulligan any hand that's not like great with having two healers. I'm just gonna give Arena a quick reset. Getting a little bit of leg. Cause we don't have like uh, Glimmer of Genius or whatever it's called, the uh, or Thirst for Genius, the draw three, discard an enchantment uh, to kind of filter through. Um, so Heliodes and Bulk tend to be a little cumbersome. Like that matchup shouldn't be too bad. Like they have counter spells, but if we can time it, like the Elspeth plan there probably made sense. We'll keep this. Pretty much like any hand with like birth on two. Um, like Arcan, Visitation, Make Angels, Prison Realm for creatures. So we got a board wipe now. Just want lions. We effectively have two draws. Okay, so they have oven that makes our prison realm worse. Oy. Okay, so the good thing at least is birth next turn gives us two life, which we can pay into dawn to draw a card. This is Jun food. Okay, so we hit our land drop. I'm actually gonna, do I decline here? Cause they can go Corvold next turn. Uh, yeah, let's decline. Let's just get Arkin going. I haven't played against food in a while. They're direct removal, they usually have Massacre Girl, they have Corval. They, they usually don't play that many Murderous Riders, at least the old lists. I think they play two maybe. Okay, so no Corval this turn, just trail. Um, let's just get this going. So stack of abilities goes, so we get that first. Enters the battlefield, triggers this. This sees this in play, makes your 4-4. Four, four. And now we're off to the races. Dawn in uh, Prison Realm can make two more. kind of assembled the uh, the lock well not even a lock just the the value train oh yeah true with the castle I was thinking of playing one idyllic tutor in the deck too just to like situ situationally kind of toolbox 
Oh shit. Okay. Everything is fine. We went from like, let's win the game to... Just not gonna commit more to the board right now. It's probably a card I shouldn't have forgot that existed. They uh they got us good there. Okay, so Corvold will come in. Do they sack an oven? Sack an oven. Do it. So Prison Realm will force them to sack this. Come on. And then with the life gain, I can draw a card. So they're gonna sack this, get two food tokens. Just fine. I want it off the battlefield and it being in the graveyard's probably better. Conquer's Death is a fantastic card to have on top. I'll just draw that now. Because Conquer's Death can also get back our Arcan. play anything else. Uh, they can gain a bunch of life, which is reasonable. Uh, Sky Tether doesn't really do much here. So the question being, do I just draw a card? I think we attack, draw a card, and play out a second Donna Hope just for devotion. They have the option to trade here, like with the Paradise Druid, They're keeping their mana. Okay, so we have Banishing Light. I actually think mana-wise, I want to get rid of the Trail of Crumbs. It'll give them a lot of card advantage. And I kind of... Hey Insight, uh, if you're on a computer, you can hover on the right hand corner here uh, and it'll be a widget that you can pull up the deck. Let me know if you're on mobile and I can link you the deck. You can find the deck there as well. Okay, so they Massacre Girl here. So they do get to wipe there, not the end of the world. Second Conqueror's Death is also nice. Yeah, in this standard you gotta if you're playing best of one, you need five, like three to five. Uh, like my Naya control deck plays three Clarions for Storm's Wrath or um, Shatter the Sky. Sorry. So I'm just going to wipe them this turn. They can get some sack damage on us, but our life total is really high. I don't want them to attack with untap with Mayhem Devil. And then next turn, I have uh, I can get back my Arkin. And then even if they play like Corvold, I still get some utility there. 
They have a virtual 21 life over here. Ah, cat. Cat is annoying. So I'll put a 1 1 counter here. Um, I think we're just going to go Donna Hope to create another one. And like a token, and then pass the turn. So they can cat three times. They need a yield to cat trigger. I'm going to make another 1-1 one, one token this turn on end step. They could basically drain for three each turn. But I can gain like six plus each turn. Like Donna hopes don't stack well together. They've assembled uh, Oventron. The nice thing is flyers get around cat jump blocks. And we got Castle here. I'm just gonna attack. So they can chump block here. actually do this like five times I can maybe potentially catch the cauldron familiar under this prison realm like if they bring it back to block have it die and then bring it back see if they slip up it's the solitaire deck you just kind of go at your own leisure way It's actually not too bad for us because we get to draw a card now. Get to draw a lot of cards. Okay, so let's you, you. Birth the Melides. Um, maybe just go wide. Um, let's decline here. You know the mono white deck that draws six cards a turn? Make another Pegasi. Get a land. Um... I don't really want to play Sky Tether because I gotta target one of my own things. I wanna give a flying. The nice thing is we also have so Corvold's kind of the combo way they could win. And we have three answers in hand. Our life total's at 24, so it's enough of a buffer that they can't just one-shot us. This is one of those matches in best of three that they might just never be able to win from a time perspective. Probably have a really good matchup because then we bring Devout Decrees in from the board. Uh, we bring in Heliod's Intervention to blow up this stuff. What do you got, opponent? We get an 04 and then just some more life gain.
34, 36. So they haven't dropped that much. Oh, this might be another casualties. Yeah. So they're really not out of it just yet. Uh, do we gonna go? So Conquer's Death doesn't really do much. Like we can go Realm Cloak, which is maybe the play. Problem is we're not gaining life now. Um, because this just gets chump locked, but whatever. It's the biggest thing on the board. That lets me attack with the mobilized districts as well. They get some card advantage here. This is part of the reason why we want to keep trail of crumbs off the battlefield. Mayhem Devil's bad. So cats in multiples aren't the best. Like, they're better when you have Mayhem Devils. Or, sorry, like... More Mayhem Devils, more ovens work better. Don't think they can kill us this turn, but I may be wrong. They have 8 damage, 12 damage with these two. They might be able to kill us even with just eating the foods. All right, so turns out Doom Foretold and Casualties of War. The deck that's just playing out a bunch of enchantments. Okay, you let us untap. I am going to decline here. I want all the mana I can get. So we're going to force their hand here. Get rid of you. I think they had lethal on us, even if they didn't play the cat. They're just going for the value plays here. So they just did everything they, like, sack, sack, sack. So you, there is four death triggers from Cauldron Familiar, four food being to stolen, and four ATBs, so that was 12 damage they could have had. And then they had some food tokens they could have sacked as well. And I'm doing this before I attack so they don't get this to die and then just bring it back with these food tokens. Crapped out. Um... They have Massacre Girl, and we have Thing. Now nah, we're dead. Because I can Prison Realm on one of these cats, but the problem is I don't have a way to gain life. I 
And then with the Mayhem Devil in hand, like just the cats naturally coming in is going to be enough to get me. Okay, they got us there. They just sack these. That one was close. Double casualties does hurt the cause. Come on, Arena. Let's play one more up. Maybe we want like um, Leyline. But Le Leyline seems kind of situational. You're not running into too many like mono burn decks. And Jun Food isn't that prevalent on the ladder anymore. Uh, we can keep this. For those who just got back in, sorry about that. Uh, when they were going through their cat combo, client froze, so I had to reset it. Um, they ended up drawing into their uh, a second Mayhem Devil, and then they just burnt us out that way. We didn't have a way to gain life after that. They had too many food tokens. And their deck's one of the grindier ones in the format, so... We got the triple Shatter the Sky. Maybe we draw fourth land. Still don't know if this is the Cavalcade version or just the traditional mono red. They'll play both of these. Um, still not 100%. So I'm just going to shatter here. They could stomp us. They'll play this out and then I'll prison realm it. So they don't get the card draw. So we can just start making tokens and gaining life with them. Elspeth conquers death. I think we keep it. If they play anything big and scary, Torbrand, Bone Crusher. Because we got their board covered, we just need a way to gain some life. I also just need like one devotion and then I have a 5-5. Five five. They really just on like bone crushers for days. Um, so I'm just gonna make a token and block. It actually nets us a life. And if they shock something, then it's fine. Okay, they got War Boss. So, life total neutral. Uh, we don't get anything. So we can Prison Realm. I think we just Shatter here. Getting War Boss off the table is important. They do get to draw a card there. We take a turn off and do that. Take four, five, it's a little bit of damage. Let's just try to find. So second castle, I don't think we want that.
We've got steam can. And they're going to Cleveland. So the plan of blocking would not have worked. I thought we put you to the bottom. Fortunately, got to do this or we die. A uh, hasty creature off the top gets us. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So how can we do this? I think we just go pride mate. Another target creature gains lifelink. Um, I think we want to gain life. Just to be safe. And I'm actually not going to attack in this turn. I just want to have a buffer. Sweet. The old do nothing but clean their board up and uh, play Najani and win. Okay, uh, we've gone for about an hour. I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, if you missed any part and you want to catch it, I'll have it up on YouTube later today. If there are any other decks you're interested in seeing, do let me know on my YouTube channel. Just drop a comment either on the community page or on any of the video descriptions, uh, and we'll take it from there. Uh, I'll probably be doing some ladder climbing just to try get, to get back into Mythic. I've probably do some more brews and then play offline. Uh, pretty much I'm a Doom Foretolder in my offline time, so this is the deck that I got top 1200 with. Uh, in best of one, but uh, we'll play some other games. I'll probably be back later this afternoon with another video. Otherwise, uh, have a great one, and we'll see you next time.